but also secure the highest seed you possibly can for day two. We see I think that was seven roll there, or maybe a five and a seven. So it's going to be a re-roll. Both rolled seven. Ten for Andrea and eight for Sarah. So Andrea is going to get to decide whether they go first or second in game one. That of is course, all. neither player knows what they're playing against just yet, Ross. Well, the, here's the thing. We're in round seven by now, and you're absolutely right. We are playing closed deck list here. Neither player, you know, is given the deck list. But I do think we are getting towards that stage of the tournament where players are going to start getting some of that knowledge. Players yeah. talk. Players, and you know, there's a good chance you actually end up seated around some of these people in previous rounds. True. So, I'm not saying they have perfect knowledge, but I think by round seven, yep. you've got your eye on the top players. No, I think that's a really good point. And a lot of people here will travel with friends that might have played against people earlier. And it's always worth asking if you can find out the information. It's definitely going to be valuable information. As we see both players mulligan, it looks like Andrea is on Amber Steel, which is, of course, usually a song-themed deck using cards like Ariel with Singer 5 to sing a whole new world. And we know there are a bunch of those Steel song decks out there. It is a deck which is seeing a bunch of play. It is getting onto the table. So, yeah, this is one that um, I think we could be seeing some love for this weekend. Yep. Two top fours, and two top fours is, is ridiculously good. Yep. Over in Fort Worth a few weeks ago, see Seems to be gaining steam in this meta, and maybe by the time we get to, maybe by the time we get to Toronto with Bucky gone away, maybe, maybe it's the best deck in the format. It could be. The Queen gets inked by Andrea, Sarah inked a snake, neither player with a turn one character on the board though. No, unfortunately nothing on the board yet, so we do have to carry on. We get two ink down there from Sarah. Now we get a character, it is Flynn Rider, which forces a response from Andrea here. Because of course, if you don't get a character down yourself of at least the same strength, well, that means you're gonna be giving your opponent free lore at the beginning of the next turn. And um, yeah, you don't really wanna be doing that now, do ya? The good news for Andrea is they have the bundling mate, Mr. Smee, with that three strength strength being the highest on the board so Flynn Rider's not going to be gaining any law for Sarah just yet so much good about Mr. Smee I mean just everything about the cards good now it's turning off Flynn Rider but we do see Sisu coming down and Andrea's got a decent hand of cards here maybe and that's the thing if you've got too many cards then Sisu becomes powerful which then activates Flynn Rider's ability so you kind of need to lower your hand size to hurt your opponent but first we play out and search for a song. Zeus was found. It was the only song that Andrea found. So it does get revealed to Sarah and goes into Andrea's hand. Of course, Ariel, despite only being a three-cost character, has Singer 5, so would be able to sing it. And Andrea, with bare necessities, is going to be able to discard a non-character card of choice and goes for the brawl. Love it. Uh, yeah, because if it was just songs, you'd have to go for friends on the other side yep. there. But... Brawl is just a super annoying card. Getting rid of some of your characters, some of your weaker characters, being able to pick that out is great. Plus, of course, how can you hear us say the word bare necessities without getting that song stuck in your head? I'm not sure it's possible. It's really, really nice to see Andrea utilizing the bare necessities there. Getting rid of the brawl, protecting the aerial, and then maybe that aerial can sing a whole new world down the line. Yeah, that would be fun. We do see friends on the other side getting inked. It is an inkable card. Draws you two, but right now it just gets you inked. Now, Sisu is going to quest for two because it is a pretty powerful quester. I think it looks like the... I think it seems like the lore might be the wrong way around at the bottom there because Sarah's just gone up to five yeah. and she is, in fact, player one. Yeah, so Sarah is at five with the help of that Flynn Rider as uh, Sarah had the highest strength character at the start of the turn with that Sisu. And now we do see what's Andrea thinking here. No, nothing played yet. All the ink is being used for our old friend Rapunzel gifted with healing. Only draws one here, but you still do get a decent character on the board that can quest for two. And it looks like we're singing. Grab your swords comes through and it's big damage with the Smee as well, removing the Sisu and Sarah's board has suddenly disappeared. But just a reminder, it is Sarah at five law, Andrea at zero. 
So we do see the Sisu there, second version, a second copy going into the ink. It's Maui time, and away goes your aerial, which honestly, aerial was being a bit of a pain being a single yes. five. Maui just unfortunately, uh, not unlike when we, we see Maui throwing people into the sea. Yeah, and you can see that law counter has now updated. It is Sarah on five as player one. And it's going to be Rapunzel singing, and then along came Zeus. Maui has been removed. Andrea still with that whole new world available in hand, but just waiting for the right moment to play it. Hasn't gone for it just yet. Yeah, and Steel Song's an awkward one. You end up playing a lot fewer characters than most decks, and you don't build up a huge board a lot of the time, but you have all of these powerful songs which can really hurt your opponent's board, so you don't need many characters. You end up with a small board, while your opponent, hopefully, if everything's going to plan, has no board, but here comes another copy of Brawl, gets rid of that Rapunzel gifted with healing. We do still at least have a Robin Hood down, but that is all Andrea's got for the moment. Yep, one card in hand for Sarah. And of course, if Andrea was to sing A Whole New World, that would replenish their hand entirely. So instead, decides to just quest with this Robin Hood for two law, which is going to be Andrea's first law on the board. Yeah, we do see the Queen there as well, which is a very widely played card in a lot of these decks, lowering, you know, when it, when it quests, it gives plus four and minus four. That's an eight strength swing. That is a pretty big strength swing. Yep, Sarah with six ink, and in comes Lady Tremaine. Not for the first time today. Andrea is going to get to select one of their characters to banish. It's their choice, but there's two good options. The queen is put into the discard. Robin Hood remains on the board. One card in hand for Sarah as play passes on over to Andrea, and it's double whole new world. Treble whole triple new triple whole new world. Wow. Triple whole new world. Uh, and when your entire hand is whole new world, whole new world, whole new world that does make it a lot easier to decide whether to play it or not but if i'm sarah i'm kind of chuffed with this yeah oh no i lost chernobox followers got a new hand of seven yes that's brilliant yeah it's really not bad at all but with the fact that andrea sang a whole new world they still have a lot of ink available which is certainly going to help them with three ink being exerted for a lawrence this comes in as a four strength character and then if it gets damaged, it's going to be a 0-4. Robin Hood also played, and it looks like one ink being floated, possibly two. I think just one ink remaining there for Andrea, left over. Yeah, we do see Chernobog going into the ink. Lady Tremaine questing for two, putting Sarah up to ten here. And we see B prepared. Once again, it comes down. Once again, Baker isn't here to deafen us. <laughs> and we see no characters down on either side of the board. And this is what these Ruby decks like to do. And just basically, you know, neither of us got any characters, but I think from here on in, I am going to be in a better position moving forward forward. Yep, Ursula Vanessa going to be the play for Andrea with those three whole new worlds in the discard. Pretty unlikely that they're going to be able to find that fourth whole new world, which we can probably safely assume they are playing. So Andrea's going to need to find a way to start drawing some cards pretty soon. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You really don't want to be losing all of them at the same time. Speaking of drawing cards, Sarah does play Merlin Rabbit, draws a card, inks a Maleficent, which could have drawn a card, and then plays Mirror, uh, excuse me, Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber, which if you move characters to it, will also draw a card. Amethyst is pretty good at drawing cards. Andrea with the Ursula Vanessa could challenge the Queen's Castle, and is, that is exactly what they do. Only one damage. The Zeus is then used onto the rabbit as it is removed from play. Sarah's going to draw an additional card. And this was four ink spent by Andrea on that Zeus. And the Queen's Castle continues to gain law for Sarah. They're now up to 12 and just eight away from the victory. Yeah, getting very nicely up there already. What was that? 60% of the way there. Here comes a goat. We're going to be 65% of the way there. A second goat. We are 70% of the way there. Apparently, I'm working in percentages now. Not entirely sure why. And Sarah is getting very close to winning this game. Andrea has been doing a great job of clearing the board, but hasn't been doing a great job of getting law so far. And Sarah kind of seems to be running away with this game, which did not look like it was going to be the way it was going to go. Yeah, I think Andrea.
Andrea seemed like they really didn't want to sing that whole new world, but were left with absolutely no choice at all. And they go for Zeus being sung by Ursula Vanessa. She is a singer four. Oh, no, it was just played for four, and then Vanessa with that one strength challenging in. Yes. And a Smee now enters the board, so Queen's Castle has been removed, but there is a double goat staring Andrea down. And here's the thing. Sarah quests this turn with both goats. You go from 14 to 16. There we go, right on cue. Thank you very much. When those goats leave the board, then you go from 16 to 18. There's only two law needed. We might have them now, essentially. Madam Mim Snake gets the goat back to hand, gets one. You play it down, you get another one. If those goats leave the board, Sarah wins. And I don't know how Andrea comes back from this. And it looks like Andrea is conceding game one. And Sarah takes a decisive yep. game one victory of her opponent only able to get two law. Yeah, that was really, really impressive. Neither player found that one cost character on turn one, but from then on out, Sarah just playing really great cards every single turn, and the Queen's Castle put in some serious work. That triple whole new world draw was not ideal, though, for the Amber Steel Songs player. No, it absolutely was not. You lost too many options all at the same time, and Sarah really took advantage of that. That new hand of seven seems to have put her in a great position, refilling her hand, giving a bunch of cards, and it wasn't really some big decisive... Like, you win 20 to 2, essentially, and you expect it to be one of these huge decisive games like we've seen so far, and I don't think it really was. We saw Andrea, you know, playing a lot of songs, getting some good board wiping going on there, but it was just, well, again, a couple law here and then a couple law here and all my Flynn Rider worked at one point. Hey, I've got a couple of go oh, I can quest with this. And then it just kind of builds up over time. And we can actually have confirmation here. Both players came into this round on 31 points. If Sarah wins his second game, yeah. goes to 38 points, then that gives her, I believe, two chances and I think 45 is generally the number we're aiming for here. 45 is not always safe, but it is pretty safe. I think we saw it in Bochum, uh, one of the days, one player on 45 points didn't make it through. Yes. So 45 is definitely the number that players are aiming for. So if Sarah is able to get this victory in the next game and get that 2-0 victory overall with that seven points, 38 points means they should just be one more win away. Yeah, it means that if Sarah can win this second game here, she should be in a position where if she can 2-0 either round 8 or round 9, that should lock her into a top 64 spot. Unfortunately for Andrea here, cannot end this round on more than 34 points, which really means you need 11 points from the last two rounds. But the problem is, if you get a 2-0 and a 1-1, that's only 10 points, leaves you on 44. That is much more of an uphill battle. But I believe we've seen people get top 64 with 44 points. Yeah, I think that is right. possible. It is. It, it really depends on how many games end 2-0 and how many end 1-1. And I'm sure there's people with mass degrees out there that can figure it out, but I frankly can't. And let's not forget, you're not only playing for the top 64. Of course. You're also playing for that top 128 who are going to get the Let It Go promo, which is an incredibly beautiful card and one that any Disney Lord Carnival collector would be very proud to have. Oh, yeah. If you're if if you come to the DLC, I feel very confident you want that Let It Go promo. Yep. It is absolutely stunning. Dragonfire is a good start, but you want to go further. So we do see the mulligan phase finishing off here. Andrea, I think it was three or four cards mulliganed. And I believe that means Andrea is going first this game. Yeah, we can see both players giving their deck a thorough shuffle. And we did see it was a slow start from both players. No turn one play from either player yep. in game one. And it took a little bit of a while to get rolling. But Sarah did what Ruby Amethyst does so well. A little bit of lore here and there from various places. And it adds up over the course of a game. Yeah, so here we go. The second game in round seven. Ruby Amethyst for Sarah. Andrea on Amber Steel Songs. Andrea is going first. Inks a queen, plays a queen. Very nice indeed. That's what you're looking for. We do have Chernobog's followers in hand from Sarah. So again, there is going to be a turn one play. Is it the best turn one play? Honestly, it's not far off. It's a really good turn yeah. one play. Does have to ink that uh, Queen's Castle, which you don't really want to do. But it's we're a few turns away, right? Right now, you need a board presence. 
Sarah does decide to go for the China Box followers. Mr. Smee is drawn by Andrea, which is a pretty interesting turn two. Of course, with the queen down on the board, there's always the threat of a shift queen, but that is not a card Andrea has as an option right now. But, oh, it is! It was tucked away. I couldn't even see it, Ross. <laughs> In comes the shift queen. And it's going to be a quest for two. That is lovely. Getting that quest for two. You ink the Tinkerbell. You shift into the queen. Quest for two. And you are in a very nice position at that point. Because you've got a nice character down, of course. You're questing for two. And, yeah, you're feeling pretty good about yourself at that point. Yeah, so play passes on back over to Sarah, who draws a card. Chernobog followers is on the board. Looks like we are going to be questing, do you banish it to draw a card? Maybe not, because there is a Madame Mim Snake in yep. hand, and you may want to save Chernobog to bounce so you can play Madame Mim Snake. Yeah, Madame Mim Snake with that three strength would be a great way of removing the queen from the board. Chernobog with just two strength is not able to quite do that. And it is the snake, so Chernobog's followers back in hand could be replayed later, but also could just be used as ink. Yeah, it being an inkable, any time you bounce an inkable back to your hand, you never feel bad about that. But, well, okay, sometimes. But you rarely feel bad about that because it means you've got more ink available for the later turns of the game. Andrea with Mr. Smee going into the inkwell. They found the Storm Rage on off the top, but it's not a great target, the Madden Mim Snake, with that three willpower. Decides to go for Ariel. Now, big moment. Do they find a song? You hope you do. You're playing a song uh -oh. based deck. There's no songs from you. See the face there from Andrea, knowing that that was not really what you were looking for. I mean, it's a good card because, it, you know, just generally, but you really want to be getting the song. That is the main reason you're playing the aerial here. And then when you don't hit the song, you're just thinking, oh, that's not going to be something else. Yeah, something like a whole new world, Andrea would have loved to have found. They had three whole new worlds in the first game, but now they just want a single whole new world. They don't find it. I love the decision though from Andrea not to quest with the Queen because the aerial's been brawled the Queen could have been removed by the Madame Mim Snake and then suddenly they would have no singers on the board whole new world off the top would be huge but it's a Zeus for yeah. Andrea and along came Zeus not along came a whole new world but it does although we've got to sing here and it is going to be an along game Zeus that will get rid of the Madame Mim Snake so even though the Queen is exerted probably not in much danger and we see the card which was not played a few weeks to go, but it's yep. now ubiquitous in the Steel Song decks, Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence with that four strength is just a very nice number, makes things difficult for Madame Medusa. Sarah does have B King Undisputed available, which does cost four. Ideally, you tend to want to sing a card like this, but it's not bad either. Just going to be able to remove one of Andrea's cards. They select Lawrence. Bye, Lawrence. Bye, Lawrence. Yeah, you make your opponent choose to get rid of one, but Andrea had two cards down, both of which they would much rather have kept. So that is when you really want to play B King Undisputed. Force your opponent into a super annoying situation. Andrea still with the queen on the board, which was shifted in on turn two, but a bit of an awkward hand. They're going to use Storm Rage on. They're going to sing it with the queen, which seems bizarre. You draw a card, but in is going to come Rapunzel gifted with healing, and suddenly those two damage counters on the queen represent two cards drawn for Andrea. What a spectacular play. Yeah, a lot of these cards, if it says chosen character rather than chosen opposing character, you can target your own characters with those skills, as long as they don't have ward, of course, and that means that something like this, you can damage yourself, play the Rapunzel, and get the draw because of the healing. Was that a second? Oh, we see Maui coming wow. in, taking out the queen was that a second mirror chamber that got put in the ink there? i think you could be right yeah i think there's two that have been inked now something to watch because that can be very good as the game goes along and you'll notice we've had a pretty similar kind of game to game one whereby lots of andrea just taken out sarah's board but sarah hasn't been getting the cheeky law going along here they're both stuck on two and that could give us a very different game this time round yeah, Andrea gets the Sleepy's Flute down and the Smee. Now, they didn't play a song this time, but they can still exert the Sleepy's Flute. It doesn't do anything. Will they do it? They don't, Ross. I'm gutted. <laughs> I always like to exert the Sleepy's Flute if it doesn't do anything. I mean, yeah, that is definitely a fantastic use of your time. <laughs>
I, I can never get around Sleepy's flu. It seems a bit too expensive and it's uninkable, but it just gets you cheeky lore as you go through the game. And actually, you know, when the whole point of the game is get to 20 lore first, yep. you do kind of see where you're coming from. The Maui with four damage counters just challenged Rapunzel, removing Rapunzel from the board. But that Rapunzel was able to quest for two before it was removed by Andrea. And Rapunzel only having one strength here is... um. Wow, it's still enough to get Maui, unfortunately, with that five willpower. So Beaking Undisputed, was that play to get rid of Mr. Yep, Smee? That's right. Right as we came back onto the table. And it's a bit of a stalemate at this it point. Is. Just both players getting rid of their opponent's cards. But Lawrence comes down again. Can we stick it for, you know, more than 10 seconds? <laughs> it's going to be a Maleficent from Sarah, who's drawing. Peter Pan, Shadowfinder, Sisu, and Flynn, the option. Sisu, the card selected. Now, the Sleepy's Flute, while it's quite slow, Ruby Amethyst does not have any item removal access. So if, if the game keeps going on for a long time, Andrea might feel like they can just get there with the flute. As a Zeus comes through, and now, of course, if they do exert the flute, it's going to be one law. Why would you not? Why would you not do it last turn, Ross? Because you didn't gain a law. This turn, you can either gain a law or not gain a law, and I'm just saying, gaining a law is good. Andrea going ahead in this. Remember, this game is pivotal. If Sarah wins this and gets the seven points, she is going to be in a good position for top 64. If they end on three points each, it becomes a much more difficult route. Possible, but more oh. difficult. What do we see? It's Peter Pan. Yeah, I love this play. Sarah using the Maleficent to damage Lawrence, which then turns it into a zero strength character and Peter Pan's shadow finder has rush so it is able to remove Lawrence from the board and remain on the board itself a really nice play Rapunzel into the inkwell for Andrea and another Rapunzel played ah but it's not got enough strength and that means free bonus oh. law for Sarah from the Flynn Rider Rapunzel is a great card but one of the downsides is it only has one strength it is about the only bad thing about the card five willpower good draw power and healing good questing for two good but there had to be something bad and that is the one strength and it comes back to haunt Andrea there as Flynn Rider gets free law for doing nothing Yep, and Rapunzel, uh, sorry, Peter Pan, going to sing Frenzy on the other side. Two cards drawn, Goat hits the board, Snake hits the board, bounces the Goat back, even more lore gain now available for Sarah. And Flynn Rider's going to quest as well, as if the three lore from Flynn wasn't enough, he's going to go on a quest to gain one more lore as well. And Sarah has now jumped ahead, eight lore to seven, as we see Ursula come down. Are we going to hit a song this time? We didn't last time. Okay, there is at least one. It is... Grab your swords. Which, I mean, you'd get the Flynn. Yep. Not able to sing it right now. Ariel, of course, having just hit the board, is still drying the ink. So that's not going to be an option. Rapunzel as a four-cost character can't sing Grab Your Swords, but it nope. can quest for two, which is going to put Andrea back into the lead, although it might just be momentarily. And Flynn Rider is going to activate again it now, right? It certainly is, yeah. That Madam Im Snake with three strength is the highest on the board. Uh, I'm a bit worried that Sarah might have forgotten this trigger. Let's see. They have until, I guess, they've played the first card to notice. There, there we, we go. go. Hello. Now you go from 8 to 11, getting that extra free law. And, I mean, this is why Flynn Rider is such a good card. How often do we see on stream it just doesn't work? Yeah. But then it does work, and you gain six law. And against a deck like this, Steel Song does not have, I said, there's not as many characters, and they tend to be a bit weaker a lot of the time. And that Flynn Rider could be propelling Sarah to victory. And now we see a goat coming down, going up to 12. And it's been a real acceleration from Sarah here. It's been Flynn Rider and Merlin Goat. The pair of them have gotten, I think, maybe 10 law between them, something like that over the past two turns. It's been quick. Yep, and we even see Sarah deciding to challenge removing this Rapunzel. I wonder if that's because Sarah is worried about another Rapunzel being an option for Andrea, where they can challenge one of Sarah's characters with Rapunzel and then heal with another Rapunzel to draw more cards. Let the Storm Rage on is found by Andrea. It's going to remove, it's going to sink two damage into the goat. And then you would imagine Grab Your Swords is going to be sung by Ariel. And that is a lot of damage. It's only Peter Pan that is going to be remaining. But the goat going into the inkwell does gain Sarah one more lore. 
Oh, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's six away. <laughs> that is six away. That is not the end of the world here. Um, well, it's not the end of the game, but for Andrea, we are getting a little bit closer. Oh, put another Flynn Rider down. Turn start, <laughs> six law, boom, that is the game. Oh, it's gone, never mind. Yeah, put it down anyway. You never know, it could work. And we see Madame Mim Snake bouncing it straight away. Yep. And then I think we've got enough law to replay it. Yep. And then, of course, the snake is the most, you know, the, the strongest character on the board. And the Peter Pan Shadow Finder is an evasive as well. So that is game on the board next turn for Sarah. So we could be seeing this 2-0 victory as early as next turn. Yeah, so it's two damage counters on the Peter Pan, not one, which the players are just adjusting because it was, of course, grab your swords, which came through previously. And Ariel on the board, whole new world. I think two copies of it in Andrea's hand, and one of them comes through. Again, Andrea finding the whole new world when they just wanted one for a long time, they find two. Not ideal. Yeah, but Sarah's very close to the end of the game now. What she really needs is a bunch of cards to finish it out. Maybe some goats or something along those lines. We do have two be prepared in hand. There's a Merlin Rabbit. There is a Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber. I think that whole new world might have given Sarah enough cards to finish out this game. She is only up by five, though. This is not an insurmountable lead by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, the Queen on the board and the Ariel on the board, as well as an Ursa Vanessa. Of course, that Sleepy's Flute is going to gain Andrea another lore as well, with that whole new world having been played this turn. But Sarah just five away, can quest for two to get to 17, and then you're just a goat or two away from victory. I like being a goat or two away from victory. We have another Flynn Rider, which could come down. That card has been all over this matchup so far. I like the idea of putting down the Queen's Castle. Or has it been inked? Did it get inked? I like the idea of Queen's Castle, if possible, frankly. And then there was one in hand. There is a chance it ended up in the ink. Now we see four for Merlin Rabbit to draw an extra card. Now we see three, it looks like, being eyed up for something. Could be Flynn Rider. Yeah, Sarah deciding to remove the arrow from oh. the board with the snake instead of questing. Four exerted. It's a goat. There and is a goat. What we're looking for here, getting the goat, going up to 16 law in total. 17 time you quest with Peter Pan. And Sarah once again has game on board next time. She does not need to play any cards to win the game unless Andrea stops her. So this is looking very, very nice here. And it really does look, after a pretty slow start, it looks like Sarah is in prime position here. What can Andrea do another whole new world now this is better because now you're getting rid of options that your opponent previously had yeah I think Andrea is really hoping for something like a grab your swords here to clear the board but having already sung the whole new world with the queen it's going to be really difficult for example to play Tinkerbell and grab your swords this time because you're going to have to pay five for grab your swords you can't sing it there's no singers available so Andrea here looks like they're caught between a rock and a hole place just can't clear this board from Sarah lots of three willpower characters it is a grab your swords but the goat remains the rabbit remains and Sarah's got a whole hand of seven new cards and they're about to draw an eighth but Andrea with the Zeus removing the goat that is huge because it means that Sarah cannot bounce the goat next turn which would have been absolutely the way to victory goat and fox will still win the game double goat will win the game goat and snake will win the game you see where we're going with this uh, super goof actually right now <laughs> would win the game but I still don't think enough people are playing that card so what have we got in hand there is a sisu being eyed up but that's there not going to no win the game yet. available might this might just be a term where you set up the board going i can't win this turn yeah but my opponent's not winning next turn so let's just build my board and win next turn instead so the rabbit's going to quest for one putting sarah to 19. Oh, goat would win here I believe they didn't ink yet. There is the potential for them to rush in with a fox to remove either the Ursula Vanessa or the Queen. 
passing over to Andrea here. Sarah for the third turn in a row has game on board. The last two times Andrea managed to thwart her. Here's the thing though. No, there we see the handshake. Sarah wins two games to zero, putting herself in good position to make a run for that top 64 spot. What I was going to say to finish